For some reason, I remember 1.45 a.m., September 15th, 2008, like it was yesterday. We just finished what became the front page in the New York Times that day, and I remember going home and thinking, the world is on fire. It was right around when Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy. It was about five hours after Merrill Lynch had sold itself to Bank of America. It was about 48 hours before AIG was bailed out by the government and the taxpayers. Five years later, there remains a lot of lingering questions about the crisis, the bailouts, and the aftermath. Two myths remain, and there's one new reality. One of the great critiques of the bailout is that the bankers walked away with boatloads of money and bonuses, and the rest of the country didn't. And why would we spend $700 billion bailing out these banks without putting some kind of new rules or restrictions or strings to prevent this from happening? This troubled asset relief program must, pro must be properly designed and sufficiently large to have maximum impact while including features that protect the taxpayer to the maximum extent possible. And there's an explanation, but it's unsatisfying. And it's this, that ultimately we needed to save all the banks. We needed to recapitalize the entire system and we needed everybody to participate on a voluntary basis. As crazy as it sounds today, there are banks that probably actually would have said no, that they didn't want the money if there were strings attached. Look what happened in Japan. Look what happened in Europe. They only gave the bailout money when the bank was in trouble. But ultimately then you're doing it serially and it takes forever. This actually worked. And don't get me wrong, the bailouts were repugnant and the bonuses were worse. But there's also a practical element to all of this. If there's one question I get more than just about any other, it's why did anybody go to jail? And did nobody try? And there's an answer to that too. A lot of people had an incentive to try to find a way to bring, not justice, but to put people away. Prosecutors, law enforcement, journalists would have been a better story. But for the last five years, we've tried, all of us have tried to find that criminal element. And while things happened that were upsetting and frustrating and unethical and immoral, sadly, it may not have been criminal. And here's the new reality, and it's the thing I worry about most. It's the next crisis. And it's not just the next crisis, it's about how we are going to respond. Politically, it will be impossible to bail out another financial institution, even if it's the right thing to do. And while I worry about that, I also worry about this. The banks, the financial institutions themselves, they're probably not going to accept a bailout the next time. And I worry that when the next domino falls, and I don't know what that domino is, I'm not sure anybody does, but it will fall. And when it does, I'm not sure we know who's going to be there to catch it. <laughs>